Hey, it's Gordon Vanderpool from Tony Stones Fly Fishing. Today we're going to tie another one of my bugs. It's called the Fire Starter. It's a jig pattern with a soft tackle collar. Uh, it's a good critter. We're going to start with this Vivas Small Hollow Tinsel. It's a red. Got a size 16 jig hook in there. You can do it anywhere from a 12 to whatever. Wrap this down to right where it starts to bend, where you're going to put your tail in. And as you work with this stuff, make sure you continue to spin your bobbin so it doesn't get all jacked up on you because it will rotate and get kind of squirrely. So next gonna be some CDC, CDL rather, sorry. First day with my new voice. Guess you could call that a total brain fart, but that's okay. Alright, so now CDL coming in. You know you measure about the length of the shank. Get it right on top and tie it in. And you can kind of adjust it to where you want it. That's where I want it, right there. So now I'm going to continue to make a little hot butt back here. And I'm going to take one wrap under there and make that little bump. And that's it. I just want that to stand out. Now this one, I'm going to wrap this down, the CDO. Now we're going to cut it. See, it's starting to spin on me. No big deal though. You just give it a quick spin and you're good to go. Next is going to be a medium brown hollow tinsel, UTC. It's going to be the abdomen. I'm going to tie this in on the tire side. I'm going to wrap it all the way down to where I built that little hot butt. Then I'm going to come back. <clears throat> now I'm going to wrap this up, leaving that little hot tag behind it. I don't do a taper on this because it is a tiny bug. If it's bigger, I might do a little taper. I'm going to wrap around the thread a couple times, give the bobbin a spin just to make sure it doesn't break on me when I come tight here. Good. Now I'm going to slide down cut that close. And you can get a couple more wraps on it for good measure if you want. Now I'm going to whip finish this. Now when you're using this tinsel, light whip finish or it will break. Don't put any tension. You're just more or less trying to get a knot. Okay, got it. So now we got a body. It's not a very durable body, so now we're going to get some clear cure goo hydro. Not much. Keep this pretty light. Just enough to protect that. Give it kind of a hard shell. That's all you want. Slowly kind of turn the body of the fly. Get it right underneath. That's all you're trying to do, just to give it a little hard shell. Get your torch. I always keep it spinning that way it doesn't bunch up on me anywhere. And she should be hard as a rock. Next step, I'm going to get this extra small, it's a claret dubbing, extra fine, tiny. I'm not going to put much on it, so I'm going to set that off to the side right there. Now at this point we're going to add in some thread. You can add in whatever, but I like to use this 16 aught Vivas. It's a light olive. This is going to be a contrasting collar behind when we finish the fly that I like. I think contrast is a big part of what trout see when they decide to take your offering over something else. Contrasting colors next to each other tends to make your stand out a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to get this claret. I've done good over the years with claret on lake flies, but I also like to use it on my nymphs for little hot spots like I'm doing now, and it works really good too. So here we go. And you don't want any long fiber sticking out here, so if you see any of those like that when you're done, we'll just cut them off. Okay, so we got it up there. Let's make sure it's tight on the thread. There we go. 
Okay, so there's your little collar. Done. Nothing major. Next, I'm going to get this. I guess it's called a barred ginger. It's from a good fr friend of mine, Evan Brandt. The company is Sidling Hill Hackle from Pennsylvania. Check him out. He's got some awesome stuff. And this is from him. He'll take good care of you. Just give him a ring. Sidling Hill Hackle. Okay, so I'm going to tie this in on the tire side. I'm going to tie it so when I wrap, it naturally preens backwards, of course. Cut that off. Close. Do one more wrap. Okay, now I'm going to go. And then as you wrap, this first one's probably not going to matter. But once it comes back to this side, we'll preen those fibers. Actually, it's got stuck on the bead. So it did matter. There we go. We'll do one more wrap. Now this did get stuck on my bead back there, so it didn't lay quite the way I wanted, but that's okay. Once I finish this, it'll go right where it needs to be. It's no big deal. Okay, get this. Slide down, cut it close. Looks a little messy at this point. Preen all this back. Might take a couple times to coax it where you want it. Do a wrap. And I see there's a couple more down there. Do a wrap. There we go. Now I've got it exactly where I want it. There we go. And if you see those getting, you know, too close to the body, then just fix them. But that's it. Okay, now at this point, put a little bit of hardest hole on the thread for the whip. You know, I've always been a guy that I'll whip it two or three times, but with these smaller bugs, this really is the way to go. Putting a little head cement on there, you can do one whip and then you're good to go. Okay, that's it. There we go. That right there has been a good bug for me. I hope you guys like it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate all the support I'm getting on these videos. So thanks for watching. Have a good day. And keep on tying. Just remember, flash-up's coming in the next couple months, so be ready for that. All right, take care. Thanks for watching.